All right, guys, so I've got something a little bit different here. I uh, was going to do just a standard review of this new Phileda Speedmaster I've got, but seeing as I've already got a couple of other Speedmaster homages in the Courgette and the Bleaker, I thought I'd do a comparison between the three. So here we go. First of all, I'm going to go through what order I actually bought these in, and then I'm going to go into like specs, and then compare them and just tell you which one I think is the best and why. So, getting right down to it, the first one I picked up was the Courgette. If you've been following my channel for a while, you'll have seen this one. It's gone back quite a while though. So there's a few little differences with this one, compared to the other two. The other two are actually quite similar. With this one, you can probably tell straight away, the bezel is a little bit thicker than the actual Speedmaster. So I know that that's put off quite a few people are buying this one, because they think the bezel is just too thick. And after having a couple of other watches, I... I'm inclined to agree, to be honest. So if I compare it to the Bleaker, as you can see, the bezel on that is a lot thinner. And it just is more in keeping with the proportions of the actual Omega Speedmaster. But the Bleaker has its own issues. You could probably tell straight away that what should be the Chrono hand is actually a second hand. That's because this one, although it's automatic, which it has on the dial, it isn't actually a chronograph. Courgere on the other hand, that is a chronograph, and it's got a VK63 movement, so mecha quartz, so it has the mechanical, well, faux mechanical chrono hand, so if we just push that, it starts ticking, not a, not a proper sweep, but certainly not your standard quartz tick, so it does look good. Just a shame about that thick bezel. And like I say, the bleaker, that's just the day-day complication instead. Which I didn't actually realise when I bought it. If you want to see full reviews of these two watches, I'll leave a link up here. I'm just going to quickly go over a couple of bits on these. So, other than this being a day-day, the spec, uh, the proportions, the dimensions, are actually pretty close. Let's get on to the Phileda and compare these two. So, as you can see, looking pretty similar. The main difference, obviously, the file leader is actually a chronograph, unlike the Bleager. But other than that, they're quite similar looking. Obviously, one's got a bracelet, one's got a strap. But the actual case and the actual dial and everything, bar the different complications, look pretty similar. So, getting into the file leader itself. As you can see, it says mechanical on the dial, below the 12. So we've got file leader, chronograph, mechanical. And then we've got your standard sub-dials for a chronograph. Okay, ticking seconds at the 9, you've got the minute, and then the one at the 6, you've got the hour. So, like I say, this is a mechanical. So if you push the push from this one, we actually have the mechanical chronograph go. And then obviously, Push that again, stop it, push the button one, and then you got the snap back. One of the difference with this file leader, the crown on it is not screwed down. It's just a push pull. Whereas the other two are actually screwed down. So that's one little difference, which I would have preferred to have on this file leader to be honest. But it's not really a dive watch, so it's not really a big deal. Speaking of which. File leader actually say that the water resistance rating on this is 70 meters, which is unusual. Normally you get either 50 or 100, but they say this is 70. Doesn't say anything on the back or anywhere else, but that's what they're claiming. Speaking of the back, let's turn this around and have a look. So as you can see, if I zoom in, the ST1901. Really nice movement. If you saw my previous video, that also had an ST1901. I do actually have a few of these now in different watches. I do really like them. Really nice reliable movement and they just look great as well. So while we're around here as well, so we've got solid end links on this. Completely solid bracelet. We've got a milled clasp. Unfortunately no micro adjust, which is a little bit disappointing. We do actually have this diver's extension. But it's absolutely huge. So you can't really use that as like a 
what is it some people call it a sweaty day extension because it's just far too big which is a bit of an unusual choice to be honest when you're not really going to be diving with this watch they've only been 70 meters but that's what they went with so with the links like i say they're all solid and then we've got push pins so no screw links but they work well no issues with them at all so apart from the different movements in these watches the other main difference is like i say this one has a bracelet the other two just have straps but with this bracelet that does actually bring up a slight issue that i noticed pretty early on so i'll show you this it's to do with the lug to lug so if you measure the lug to lug just on the lugs about 48 and a half which if i compare that to the courgette that's more like 47 47 and a half and then with the Beligo we've got 48 and a half as well but the issue being like i say with this bracelet as you can see we've actually got protruding male end links uh, mid link sorry which do actually extend the lug to lug quite significantly so if I measure it including them we actually get a not insignificant 56.4 which makes it a lot larger wearing on wrist unfortunately so due to this I've actually been wearing it on a leather strap instead of this bracelet I do like the bracelet it's well made works well like I say, a little bit annoying that there isn't any micro adjust, but it's that lug to lug. I know this standard Omega has the same protruding male mid links, but it just makes it too big, which is a bit of a shame. But easily fixed if you wear it on a leather strap, like I say, and I will show you that in a bit. As for the other dimensions, I'll show you them now. So we've got about 14.3 thickness, including that top hat crystal. We'll be testing that in a minute to see whether it's sapphire. And then if we compare that to the other two again, Bleager is more like 15 again that has a top hat crystal on it as well the courgette does actually have a slightly domed crystal but it's not a top hat one like the other two so that one is only 13 mil and all of these all have 20 mil lug width so if you do want to change the strap out on any of them if you do pick any of them up You've not got any issues there easy to do easy to find straps for so while we've got all three of them here let's quickly test whether we've got sapphire crystal on them so let's start with the courgette so no sapphire crystal on that the bleager not on that either now the fire leader that is actually sapphire crystal so that is a nice addition so i'll just quickly zoom in on that dial just so you can see in a bit more detail what it's like nice distortion from that domed sorry top hat sapphire crystal it does look nice and with it being sapphire you've not got to worry about scratching it either unlike the other two and then if you look at those sub dials we've actually got a little bit of texture on them as well the concentric circles which is a nice touch and there's no issues on this at all everything's nicely lined up no obvious marks or anything do wish we had a sign crown but not too bad would have been nice but I do wish more though that it was actually screwed down I do prefer screw down grounds even if you're not taking them to them and I don't know why just a personal quirk I guess but let's try now and show you what the loom's like I'll just quickly show you what it's like 
from the others just as a quick comparison So, as you can see, not got a great deal of lume on any of them, really. Surprisingly, though, the Beleaguer does actually have a little bit more lume on the hands than the other two. But, as you can see, it doesn't really last very long. It fades pretty quickly. So, like I say, don't be buying any of these watches for the lume. So, all that's left to do now is show you on wrist. So, this is what it looks like on my 7-inch wrist. Like I say, I couldn't get a perfect fit. This is a little bit too tight for my liking, really. And if I had another link in, it's a little bit too loose. So, a little bit unfortunate. But, but again, that main issue is that protruding mid-link. Increasing that lug to lug quite significantly. With a 7-inch wrist, it's pretty much right on the limit of what I think you can get away with wearing. So, if you've got a smaller than 7-inch wrist, and you do like this... You're going to have to be putting on a different either strap or bracelet because the protruding mid links just add a lot. But other than that, it does look good. But I've been wearing it mainly on a leather strap. And I'll quickly show you what that looks like now. So, this is what it looks like on the leather strap I've been wearing it on. Nothing too flash, just a simple plain black one. But I think it does look good. And like I say, it does dramatically decrease that look to lug. Because you've not got that protruding mid link on the bracelet. So, if you've got a smaller than 7 inch wrist and you do want to pick one of these up, you have to change that out of that bracelet, otherwise, it's just going to be too big. Other than that, though, great watch, great movement, build and finish, all really good. It's just that unfortunate mid link, but I think it is like the original, so they've kept it faithful, I guess. But it's going to be a little bit of an issue if you've got smaller wrists. So that's pretty much it, guys. I know this video has been a bit longer than my usual ones, but I wanted to get this comparison in because a few people asked me when I did the other two. And I've been waiting for this one to come in so I could do a comparison with all three. So hopefully you appreciate it. And I won't be doing videos this long all the time. This is pretty much a one-off for now. Might do a couple here and there, depending on what I'm doing. But the reviews will be short on this. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.